Hi everybody. Sunday evening. I think it's September 1st. Yeah, tomorrow's Labor Day. So I hope you're doing well. And um, this is Steve Dallas. And my channel name is Steve Dallas 777. And uh, in case you want to view more of my videos. Uh, so tonight I'm not going to function so much as a, as much as like a digital piano bar, uh, which uh, I think is a great idea. But I'm kind of testing the waters to see uh, how many of you respond to t teaching videos. I had a very encouraging teach uh, response from uh, someone and. Um, If I remember the the handle, I'd mention it so I could say hello to you. Oh, you're the one that said you wished you had known me when you were 12 or something or many years ago, whatever. And uh, so thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so here's a strange teaching topic. The title of this video is uh, How to Play Beer Barrel Polka. And uh, so I'm going to play a little bit of it, you know, so those of you who aren't interested in really delving into it, you can flip it off after, after I play this. <laughs> Now the um, the essence of the polka is is a left hand pattern that looks like this. Now I wanted to show you on the accordion if I can get this <laughs> big girl up here. I say girl because it's a girl's accordion. Um, it's still a full accordion, but it's it's a smaller size. But I wanted to I wanted to show you a little of this. I think I have to stand up in order to uh, demonstrate this. Let's see. Let me get unhooked here. I took this guy up when I was uh, thirty years old. As you know, now I'm a septuagenarian. <laughs> but I'm not old. At least everyone else is old. Um... If you know anything about the accordion, uh, which, you know, not many people do, but um, it's air-driven. This thing here is called the bellows. His, the air button here allows me to hear it breathe, so to speak. 
these are the buttons. Now, here's what I wanted to, this is technically called a piano accordion, okay? Now, button boxes, they are another animal. They are another animal, and you're not going to hear me expounding on them because I don't know much about them because they're like harmonicas, you know, you, um, you press a key. Now, notice you press a key here. Okay, it's the same note, pulling or pushing. Uh, but button boxes, there's something else. If you're a button box player and you, you're you expounding on this on the internet, please, uh, please message me so... I, I'd be happy to mention mention you to the public, and I would also like to learn something more about it. So, anyway. The accordion, all these mysterious buttons. Now, the accordion is set up, if you, if you look here, here's the C row, the C row. Here's the C, here's the main, the root of the chord, which is C, and then right up beside it, on the upside, how would you call it? I don't know. This is the C chord. There's this, there's the major chord. You see that? There's the major chord. Now, if you go up one, you hear the same chord, only minor. If you go up another one, you hear the C chord, you see, you hear C7. And the last one, which is a little harder to reach, C diminished, okay. Not as used as much as the other. Now, the accordion is set up ideally to play this oompa, 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 oompa. Watch how, watch how easy it is. That's weird. <laughs> I can't play it now because I'm watching my fingers in the mirror. That's crazy. I had to learn it entirely by feel. So I had to close my eyes. There, can you see it? Now, this the outer row, the inner row is called the counter bass. The counter bass. Uh, make sure this is still recording. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, this is called the counter bass. Now, notice it's not a chord. See, it's the third of the chord. If you go to the piano and go, you notice, see, there's three notes to a chord. Well, that inner row is, the, is that note. Now, the fifth of the chord is actually on the next, on the G row up. Okay. All right, so... That little deal right there, that scale, that's that's a pain, and I'll sh and I'll tell you why. Playing scales on the left hand is really a pain, because here we have a C row, and then you have the G row, and then up. Here, the next row is D. Notice they're in fifths. Now, now, let's go the other way. Here's the C row. Here's the F row. Now, that's known as the four chord, okay? Fancy language, the subdominant. If you're in the key of C, okay, then you go to the four chord, you're playing an F chord, okay? Now, it's no coincidence that these are arranged like this because in a in a song like um beer barrel polka 
you're primarily using three chords. And hallelujah, they're right next to each other. How cool is that? So you go. Now watch carefully the left hand. I'll, I'll play this lightly. Or I might, I might even just try to hum the song. There's a garden. There's a dun dun. Da da dun ba 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 da ba ba da ba 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 da ba ba da da ba. Back to C. Ba da da ba ba da da ba ba da da ba ba da da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba ba da ba 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 ba. Now here I might want to use the seventh chord, so I have to. I have to skip up above here, so that's kind of a stretch. Back to C, okay, and so forth. All right. So the uh, the F chord is there a four chord? And I don't think there's a four chord in the verse part of. Uh, so the main chorus goes to F. So the the F row is right here. Roll out the barrel. You have a barrel of fun. Okay, and so forth. You get the idea. So, as you can see, and that's enough of an accordion lesson for tonight. If you're interested in more accordion lessons, I'm not, you know, I'm just a, I'm not a really great accordionist, but I, I know enough that I can stroll down the street and uh, play something. <laughs> All right, so what you saw on the accordion, is a little more difficult on the piano. Now here's the alternating note if you want to go boom, boom, boom. I didn't get into that on the accordion, but I, I will if you're interested. It's just the next row. It's no, it's no mystery. The root of the G chord. But anyway, in order to produce a polka beat, which is essentially oompa, 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 yeah, oompa, 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 oompa. This is the easiest way. Okay, like this. If you really get super excited and you're you're trying to make a bigger sound on the piano, then it really becomes difficult. Now, a polka is on on the on the piano is is easier if you don't play the melody like for instance if you wanted to do just a plain old oompa pa you see that i hope you can see my left hand i thought i checked it but la 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 you see so that's easy, but you don't have a melody. If you want to play a melody, that's, that's too hard. So you consolidate it to one hand. So a polka beat is useful in, di in various settings. Um, let me see if I can think of some songs that use the polka beat, because part of um, what I teach on improvisation on the piano, sometimes called jazz piano, you know, same thing in a sense, jazz piano, uh, playing by ear. There we go, playing by ear, uh, is I... I I divide up songs into some primary styles. And I think probably I could play most songs in five different styles. Tonight's emphasis is the polka beat. The polka beat is also used in a lot of show tunes. 
um, there's no business like show, business like no. So it's used for those peppy songs in show tunes. Uh, there's another popular use is Jewish music. You change it from a major chord to a minor chord. And of course, you know how to do that, right? You take C major, middle note moves down a half step. Hava, nagila, hava, nagila, hava, nagila, hava, da, da, da. Okay, so forth. Um, in, in Christian worship music, the Jewish songs used to be more popular. Uh, here's one I remember from years ago. I will celebrate dum, dum, da, 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 a new song. I will celebrate. Okay. So what other genre of music uses the polka beat? There's a better term for that too. Musicians, you can help me out here. Halftime vamp. Halftime vamp. I don't know whether it's halftime vamp or double time vamp. Somebody text me or comment and tell me which is the correct term. All right, so there is, there's the polka beat. Practice this. Use your third finger on the root. Complete the chord with these two. Go to four notes below which is actually the fifth of the chord. It's the fifth of the chord. Third finger, little finger. Practice that until you can do it in your sleep. And the three principal chords of a song, of common songs, are what? One, four, and five. Here's one. You're in the key of C. One, two, three, four. There's the number four in the scale. Same, see? Same muscles. Five chord. One, two, three, four, five. If that's too high and it runs into your melody, just take it down to here. Take it down an octave. Okay, practice that a lot. Now, the right hand of um, beer barrel polka, and of course, naturally, you're welcome to play it in a single finger. Sure you'll be able to find a lead sheet on that okay you can find a lead sheet on that if you want to learn that and i wanted to comment on my use of the double thirds double thirds means this simply harmonizing the melody a third below this is a third, okay? That's a third. Any place, any place is a third. Now, granted, there are major and minor thirds. We're not going to get into that right now. Uh, but um, a major third is... Oh, I said I wasn't going to get into it. Yeah, shame on me. A major third is larger. It's got more keys stuffed in between. One, one two, three. Three. This is a sandwich with three pieces of bologna. Oh, am I happy now? Major thirds are happy. Okay. Minor thirds tend to be sad. But when when a third a major when a minor third is stacked on top of a major third, sometimes it plays tricks on your ears and you say, Oh, that sounds happy too. Yeah, you can't tell. But if it were on the bottom, listen. sounds sad but anyway here's thirds certain songs can be sung throughout harmonize some people can can sing by harmony a third below some people can do that and that's cool um depending on their talent, um, there are times in the song when that won't work. Um, uh, 
like the last phrase of this song. We'll all join in. Now, I will explain that harmony. And um, when I teach my students that I call, I say, okay, this part of the song, we'll all join in. Okay. This lower note is what an alto would sing. Some people don't know that the low range of the female voice is called the alto. You know, people who grow up in gospel music often can do this by ear. I call this, we'll all join in the song. I call it static harmony simply because it doesn't move. It just, la, 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 la. Okay. That's not an official, that's not an official term, you, you theory people out there. I just made it up. I'm right, moving to the chorus. See, thirds are working. We'll have a barrel of fun. Roll out the barrel. We've got the blues on the run. Zing, boom, tararo. We've got a song of good cheer. Now's the time to... Now, here, thirds don't work very well. static harmony now's the, I'll do the the alto so you can see that now's the time to roll the barrel cause the gangs all here those are parallel sixths the gangs all here So you can do that if you wish. All right. Well, my friends, um, it's been fun. I hope you I hope you learned something. And uh, like I said, the polka beat can be used for many things. And uh, uh, worship s songs. Oh, I forgot that there are there are plenty of major key polka beat worship songs too. Like for instance. Here's a real old worship song. Um, oh, come on, Steve. Come on. Um, I'm getting hot. Uh, oh. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. story. It's not as simple as the beer barrel polka. Watch this. You'll see what I mean. The joy of the Lord is... Those are thirds, okay. Yeah, that'd be a pain to go. Besides, it wouldn't, it wouldn't sound right. So you just, you kind of cheat a little bit. Outline a G chord. Now here's a good here's a here's a here's a deviation. That phrase there, you can't go. No, then they know you weren't much of a musician. So here's what you do. You use a combination. You work primarily just from this expanded C chord. And there's a little bit of a little bit of static harmony, namely this. And then just go to unison. When I say unison, that means just play a single note. When I say the word unison, I'm referencing the fact that when an alto would be singing. The joy of the Lord. Unison means you're singing the same note as the guy beside you. 
unison. There's, that's based on the chord. Joy of the Lord is mine. All right. Well, my friends, um, if there's a song you want to learn to play, comment and I will explain what style it is in. You can't play songs in the wrong style. They sound dumb. Okay. You know, if it's a, if it's a ballad, you wouldn't play, you wouldn't play that. Or the beer barrel polka in a ballad, in, you know. But anyway, I, I will show you how, how the styles are related. There's only two basic feels in the whole world. I might be exaggerating, but one is swing and one is rock. Swing and rock. It's easy. Rock and roll uses even eighth notes. And swing uses pairs of eighth notes, which are long, short, long, short, long, short. We'll get into that. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, Give me a shout. Let me know what songs you want to learn. That'll help guide me into what style I want to explore next. <sighs> Sometimes I'm known as the digital piano bar, and I'm not giving digital piano bar up. You just want to hear me play. Say, Steve, would you play this this for me? And if I think it's worth teaching, I'll make an I'll make another video, and I'll link them together, or, or I'll tell you how to get there. So okay, hey, have a great evening, a great day, whenever you're tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and, and uh, catch, you know, catch everything I'm putting out. Thanks. Good night.